In this tutorial, we'll talk about the fundamental accounting principle. Now, some people also call it the multiplicative accounting principle. If you hear that term, same thing. So, in this example, the school cafeteria offers a choice of two main courses, grilled cheese sandwiches or soup of the day. And they offer five desserts. You can have jello or pudding. You can have fruit cups, sundaes, or granola bars. And the question is, how many different lunches could you have? Well, let's start with the main courses. And I'm going to abbreviate them instead of writing grilled cheese out and soup of the day. So here's my main courses. I'm going to call the capital G grilled cheese and the uh, capital S soup of the day. And then the desserts will use lowercase letters. So J is jello, P is the pudding, F is the fruit cup, the fruit cup. The little S is the sundae, and the little B represent the, represents having a granola bar. So we could, first of all, we could list all the possibilities. And try to do that in an organized fashion so you don't miss things. So for example, I'm going to start with the, all the uh, meals that start with that you could have a grilled cheese sandwich. So grilled cheese sandwich and a jello. Let's go to a grilled cheese sandwich and a pudding. And then grilled cheese sandwich and a fruit cup. Grilled cheese sandwich and a sundae. Or a grilled cheese sandwich and a granola bar. So those are all the meals that would, uh, for the main course, have the grilled cheese. We haven't done the soup of the day yet. So soup of the day with a jello pudding, jello, sorry. Uh, soup of the day with a pudding. Uh, soup of the day with fruit cup. Soup of the day with a sundae. And soup of the day with a granola bar. So those are all the possibilities. So there's 10 possible lunches. Now notice that there's two ways to do, to select the main course. And there's five ways to select the dessert. So notice if we multiply the number of ways we can do the first part by the number of ways we can do the second part, you actually get the number of possible lunches. And that actually is the fundamental accounting principle. When you have uh, some action that's made up of, in this case, two different ways, there's two ways we can do the first part and five ways we can do the second. If you multiply the number of ways you can do each one to make the whole, you get the number of possible arrangements. Now we could also solve this, um, or a way of listing all the possibilities with a tree diagram. So uh, so it's like you're in the line and this represents the start. So you're going to pick your main course first. You can either have a grilled cheese or you can go down here and have a soup of the day. And then after you make each of these point, uh, choices, so let's say you chose grilled cheese, you could then select a jello, a pudding, a fruit cup, a sundae, or a granola bar. If you instead selected soup of the day, you could still select a jello, a pudding, a fruit cup, a sundae, or a granola bar. And then out here we list all the possibilities. So for example, up to here is, G, is a uh, grilled cheese and a jello. And then grilled cheese and a pudding. Grilled cheese and a fruit cup. Grilled cheese and a sundae. Grilled cheese and a granola bar. And then down here, this is soup of the day and a jello. Soup of the day and a pudding. Soup of the day and a fruit cup. Soup of the day and a sundae, soup of the day and a granola bar. And again, you can add those up. There are 10 of them. So that's another way to solve that counting problem. So flipping over to the second page. So the fundamental counting principle says this. If an action can be done in M number of ways, and for each of those, a second action can be done in N number of ways, kind of like the M being the two ways you can select the main course and uh, n being the five ways you can select the dessert then the two actions together can be done in m times n ways the fundamental accounting principle can also be extended to cover actions performed in more than two ways as we'll take a look in the second example so let's say john is colorblind so when he picks his pants and his shirts and socks and everything he's not worrying about the matching okay so he's got five different pairs of pants eight different shirts, nine pairs of socks varying in color, and three pairs of shoes. So you're asked how many different outfits can John show up to school in if he must wear a pair of pants, a pair of socks, a shirt, and shoes. So there actually are four different parts here. There's more than the two that we referred to up here. So the, he can 
select a pair of pants in five ways and for each of those five pairs of pants he can wear eight different shirts and for each of those he can wear nine pairs of different pairs of socks and for each of those he can put on three different pairs of shoes so we have multiply all together and so there's a thousand and eighty different outfits that he could possibly wear so that's using the fundamental accounting principle Here's another example uh, using license plates. Uh, let's say in your province or state, uh, license plate is to have three letters followed by three numbers. Uh, how many different lic license plates are possible? So I'm going to use these as plate holders, placeholders. So it goes letter, 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 number, number, number. That's what the L's and N's represent. Now, <clears throat> in the alphabet, there's 26 different letters. So, and we're not worrying about any kind of restrictions that like all the letters have to be different or you can't repeat numbers. Of course, on normal license plates, you can. So each of these can be filled in 26 ways. And then we have 10 different digits to put in each of these. And you multiply these because this is one license plate. And for each of the 26 ways to put the first letter, there's 26 ways to put the second letter, times 26 ways to put the third letter, times 10 ways to put the first number, etc. So it would be 26 to the power of 3, or 26 cubed, times 10 cubed, which is 17,576,000. So that's about how many different license plates are possible. Now if you get into, let's say you wanted all the letters to be different. If you want all the way letters to be different, then we would start this with 26. And then since we've used the letter and we can't reuse it, then you would go times 25 for this one. And then there will only be 24 different letters left for this one. And then there are, okay, so let's say, let's say you wanted all the numbers to be different too. Then we would put a 10 here and a 9 here and an 8 here. And so that's going to be a smaller amount because so we would go 26 times 25 times 24 times 10 times 9 still pretty big. So there's still 11 million 232 thousand different license plates with that restriction. But that's what it would look like if you uh, if you did restrict it that way. So on to another example. Uh, a president, treasurer, and secretary to be drawn from the people Amelia, Bruce, Carmen, and Dolores. And let's say the school, um, uh, just to put a little twist in this, um, achieves gender equity by having a female one year and a male the next. So this is the year that the president must be a female. So let's say that this first branch is going to be picking the president. And then we'll, uh, and it really doesn't matter if we do the treasurer next or the secretary, but uh, let's put the treasurer here and the secretary in the end. So this would be the beginning of, of choosing the president. And since there's a restriction on who can be president because Bruce can't, it'd be a good idea to start there. So we can only have Amelia, Carmen, or Dolores for president. Okay, Bruce has to be passed over this time. So after you pick the president, of course, the person can't be president and also a treasurer. So there's three branches here. Now, at this point, for example, Amelia has been used. So we can't put Amelia here, but we could put Bruce or Carmen or Dolores. And then here, Carmen's been used. So we could only have Amelia, Bruce or Dolores. For this branch, we've chosen uh, Dolores to be president. So we only have Amelia, Bruce or Carmen to be treasurer. And then after that selection, we've got we'll be two people left of the four for the secretary. So, for example, at this point, we've used Amelia and Bruce, so we can only put Carmen or Dolores here. At this point, we've used, um, used Amelia and Carmen, so we only put Bruce or Dolores in those two branches, and et cetera, all the way down. Uh, no repetitions, kind of like that last example. And so we would list uh, all the possible outcomes. So, for example, A, B, C is the top one. A, C, oh sorry, A, B, D is the next one, and then A, C, B is the next one, etc., all the way down. If you count those, uh, you'll find that there's 18 different executives can be chosen. Now, according to the fundamental accounting principle, you see there's three ways to select this, and I shall bring that up. There's three ways to select the president. 
times there's three ways to select the treasurer and then times there's two ways in each case to do the secretary so again this executive has three different parts three ways to choose one three ways to choose another two ways to choose another and that's why another reason that there's 18 possible executives that's where the one the 18 comes from now one more example here and this has to do with uh, our, our making um, different numbers, so accounting problem involving numbers. And the, it asks how many three digit even numbers can be created if, uh, in, in A here, repetition of digits is allowed. So you could have a number, for example, 445. Uh, we've repeated the 4 twice. Uh, actually, I guess that wouldn't work here. It was supposed to be even. The last number had to be an even number. So if it's even, you have to have uh, a 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 in the last spot. So repetition of digits is allowed. Now, in order for it to be truly a three-digit number, you cannot put a zero here. Zero sixty-three is only a two-digit number, not a three-digit number. So you can only put one to nine here. Because it's supposed to be uh, repetition, of digits, repetition of digits is allowed, you can still put anything from zero to nine here. So zero could be here, or of course it could be in the end. If it's going to be an even number, you can only have zero, two, four, six, or eight on the end here. So there's nine ways to select the first digit, one through nine. There's uh, going to be ten ways to select this one because you can put any digit you want in the middle for the tens digit. But there's only five different numbers you can put in the end because it's going to be even. You can't, for example, have a one or a three or a five or a seven or a nine here. It has to end in zero, two, four, six, or eight. And we multiply these because this is one thing. It has three parts. There's nine ways to do the first, times there's ten ways to do the second, times there's five ways to do the third. So 9 times 10 times 5 is 450. So there's 450 different three-digit even numbers with repetition digits allowed. Now B is a little more complex because uh, we're going to not allow repetition of digits. Now we want it to be even. So what complicates this is number 0. Because, remember, we're not allowed to have the zero in the first spot, but of course it needs to be, it, it, or it, it can be on the end. In some cases it is, some cases it isn't. So it's best if you actually, there's a reason there's two different sets of uh, three boxes here, is it, one is if we have an even number at the beginning, and the other one's if there's an odd number at the beginning. So that's how I'm going to break it into two parts. So let's say it starts with an even number. Um, the middle number has to be something from 0 to 9, but of course different than this because there's no repetition of digits. And the last number still has to be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So the even numbers, now there's these are all the even numbers, but of course we can't put 0 there. So you can only use 2, 4, 6, or 8 in this first spot here. So there's only four ways to select that. Whatever number you put there, you can't put here. So I've used one of the numbers. So there's going to be, and actually I, I did the 4 here uh, next here. The reason I put the 4 here is you should always work with um, what, if anything has any kind of restrictions on it at all. The only restriction here is that this number has to be different than these two. So I'm going to, there's four ways to put the first number, 2, 4, 6, or 8. And if I already used one even number and it's going to be even, then uh, I can't reuse that number. So instead of uh, five ways to fill this is only four. So two, four, six, or eight has been used here, which is one of the even numbers, so there's still four of them left can be put here. Now whatever number is used here and here, this one has to be different. So that's why there's eight ways to select the tens digit, the one in the middle, because it can't be this, the same as this one or this one. So if you multiply four by eight by four, you get 128 different even numbers, three digit even numbers. Now let's do if this is odd. 0 to 9 and different, and of course, 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Now, if this is odd, it can be a 1, a 3, a 5, a 7, or a 9. So there are five ways to select this one. There are also five ways to put this, because I haven't used one of the even numbers here, because this one's odd. So whatever number this is and this is, I, I have used two numbers of the 10 possible digits, so this has to be different. So again, eight ways to do this. So 5 times 8 times 5 works out to 200. So there's 200 odd numbers, 
odd three-digit numbers with no repetition allowed, and there's 128 even ones, and of course, so we would add the two. So there's 328 altogether, three-digit even numbers with repetition digits not allowed. So that's another example of a counting problem involving digits.